Once again, I ask you to join me in Luke chapter 2. We'll begin reading in verse 21 in Luke chapter 2 this morning. As you know, we've been preaching for a few weeks now about the Lamb of God. He was promised a place, a, a way was prepared. He was provided last week. And then this week, we're going to see that Lamb praised. And that's what we ought to be about, is praising Jesus, praising our Savior, the Lamb of God. Would you stand with me for the reading of the word? Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 21. And the Bible says, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. <clears throat> and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Let's pray. Dear Father, we bow before you once again. We thank you, Lord, for all that we've been studying, God, how that you gave a promise way back there in Eden that there was one coming that would deliver Man, that would crush the evil one and deliver us from our sins. We saw how you brought that plan into motion and brought it about. You prepared a perfect place, a pure place in the womb of that virgin Mary. And then you provided that lamb when the time was appropriate at the very place the prophet said he would be born. And you worked all of that out and you brought your lamb into this world. The bread of life. And now, Father, as we see these old saints of God praising that Lamb, praising Jesus and giving glory and honor unto you for, for all that you've done on our behalf, let us today purpose to do exactly that. As we close out one year and begin to uh, approach and, and, and go into another year, may praise be on our lips May we thank you for all the blessing of the past year for bringing us safely to this end of year. And may we praise you for the opportunities that we look forward to in the coming year. Father, teach us from your word. Thrill our hearts again by your word. In Jesus we pray. Amen. When Jesus, according to the scripture, when Jesus was eight days old, he was circumcised, as prescribed by the law, Leviticus chapter 12, if you want to read some of that, just begin in verse 1 and read a little while. After 40 days, 
Mary has reached the end of her purification period. Again, Leviticus chapter 12. In these verses of our text today, we are allowed to go to the Lord's house with Jesus, with Mary and Joseph, as they take him to be presented to the Lord as prescribed by the law. While they were there, some very special events occurred. Two old saints of God, Simeon and Anna, were in the temple. They were there because the Holy Spirit led them there. The Holy Ghost led them there. They were part of a faithful Jewish remnant who was looking for the appearing of the Messiah. When they meet Jesus that day, even though he was just an infant of some 40 days old, they were overjoyed and began to lift up praises unto the Lord. Now you and I, who have met him in an intimate way, who he has saved, redeemed, cleansed from our sin, and come in through the Holy Spirit to live within us, we ought to be overjoyed and praising him and lifting up glory unto the Lord, shouldn't we? I want to talk about today the Lamb praised. The Lamb praised. When Simeon enters the temple and takes Jesus into his arms, the old man declares for all to hear the reasons for his joy. Simeon gives us three um, reasons, three motives for praising the Lord that is just as valid today as it was for Simeon in that day. The name Simeon means he who hears. And apparently this man had been hearing the voice of the Holy Ghost. He had been told that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Jewish Messiah, the Savior of the world with his own eyes. He would see him for himself. When old Simeon sees Jesus, he is notified by the Spirit that this is the child, this is the babe, this is the one that you've been waiting for. This is the Lord's Christ. And he begins to praise the Lord because of who had entered the world and who had entered the temple and who had entered his life. So just who was this baby? Well, he's identified as the Lord's Christ and the Lord's salvation in our text. Simeon understood who he was, but few others did. We've been introduced to some shepherds who were... Um, introduced to him who, who knew who he was. And they made known what they had seen and heard, but few others realized who Jesus was. The priest who had circumcised him just a few weeks earlier didn't know who he was. The other people in the temple that they didn't know who he was. The folks in Bethlehem the night he was born did not know who he was. Sadly, most people alive today do not know who this child was and is, but he still is the salvation of the Lord, the Christ of the Lord. He is God in human flesh. John chapter 1 tells us in the first verse, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God, the Son, the personification of the Word of God, became flesh. That's who this baby was, and that's who Jesus is still today. He is the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 8, we mention that over and over in this series. He is the only Savior of sinners and the only way to God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's who Jesus is. That's who Simeon recognized, and that's who I want you to recognize today if you don't already know Him in the free pardon of your sins. Simeon is excited because the promised one has appeared. He knew who Jesus was. The question now is, do you know who Jesus is? Have you received Him as your own Savior? 
have you applied the salvation that he, or the forgiveness and salvation that he paid for, have you had it applied, appropriated to your account so that you too are a child of God? If you do, then you ought to be just as excited as Simeon. If you do know him, if he's your Savior, you ought to be praising him. You ought to be happy to let everybody around you know who Jesus is, that he's yours and you're his. If you don't know him, today you can know him. You can come to him. You can receive forgiveness and cleansing. You can be brought into the family of God, praise the Lord, because of who Jesus is and what he's done on our behalf. As Simeon praises God the Father for the baby Jesus, he tells us a little bit about why Jesus came into this world. We're told in verse 30 that Jesus is salvation. We've already covered that. But then we're told that He's come to change the whole world. The ministry that He will fulfill will impact the Jewish nation but it will also reach into the Gentile world. He came to change the whole world. You see, nothing will ever be the same again. Jesus came that we might be brought into, reconciled to God, brought back into sweet fellowship and relationship to the Lord God that sin had broken. And so Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's what he said his mission was. <clears throat> Basically, Simeon is reminding us that Jesus came into this world to save all those who will come to him by faith. Whether a person is a Jew or a Gentile, Jesus came to provide salvation to all who will receive him. This is the promise of the Word of God. We could read from many places and find that whosoever will. Called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We could read from other places, but I want to just choose one, one excerpt from Revelation 22, verse 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Whosoever will. The Lord Jesus came to save all those that will come by him to saving grace. The truth that Jesus came into this world to set me free from my sins is a true motive for praise. He did the same for you, my friend. He did the same for all the world. That He would love me enough to die for me and to save me by His grace is a thought beyond my words to describe. It's something I'm appreciative for. And it's something that, yes, I'm excited about. And I don't mind telling folks, and I don't mind folks seeing that I get excited over the Lord Jesus and what He's done for me. We all ought to be excited about the Lord. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Praise His name, child of God. Praise His name. Simeon continues his praise by offering a prophecy of what Jesus will accomplish in his life. The phrase fall and rising again of many in Israel refers to Jesus as the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Notice with me Psalm 118. Psalm 118 and verse 22 the stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. Now look into Isaiah right quick. Isaiah chapter 8. And verse 14. He shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Many in Israel would stumble over the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. 
They would stumble in rejection. But a few would rise again in salvation. Jesus is a stone. A stone of stumbling for those that trip over Him and refuse to you know, reject Him, refuse to receive Him. A foundation stone for those who will receive what He offers and build their faith and life upon Him. He is also a sign. The word signs carries the idea of a miracle. Jesus is God's miracle. You ever thought about that? Jesus Christ is God's miracle. But instead of receiving Him as the gift and revelation of God, His enemies attacked Him and crucified Him. His birth was a miracle. And they attacked it. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 8, the Gospel of John, chapter 8 and verse 41, they accused him of being the product of fornication. The miracle of the virgin birth is something that I still can't explain. <laughs> but they attacked it. His miracles were ridiculed and attributed as the work of Satan, Matthew chapter 12. His character was called into question. They mocked him as he died. They lied about his resurrection, accused his saying that his body had been stolen. Even today, men still doubt the miracle person of Jesus by questioning his promise to return to earth again. He said, I'm coming back. And men scoff today, don't they? Where is his coming? We've heard this since the fathers. Before the fathers fell asleep. Second Peter. Then Simeon talked about a sword. Of course, this was Mary's pain. Verse 35, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Mary suffered as she watched Jesus fulfill His Father's plan. The ultimate hurt came the day she watched Him dying on that cross for sinners. But I want you to notice something. She never said anything. She didn't plea. She didn't cry out. She, didn't, she never said anything. Mary's silence speaks volumes to me. The one person who never doubted who Jesus was was Mary. She never had a doubt. She knew His birth was a miracle. She knew His conception in her virgin womb was a miracle. She never doubted who He was. She knew exactly what the angel had told her and how it had been brought to pass in her own body and in her own life. Mary spoke in her silence. I try to imagine... If it had been me and it had been my mom, if I had been ridiculed and mocked and spat upon and beaten and hung on a tree and my mom was standing there and my mom would have said, don't kill him. He's different, but don't kill him. He's a little, you know, strange, but don't kill him. He's, you might hate him, but don't kill him. Can you imagine? But Mary never spoke. That speaks volumes to me. That Mary knew exactly what was going on and she knew that it was God's plan and it had to be fulfilled. And she kept all those things in her heart. I'm not telling you she understood all the end from the beginning, but she knew that God had a plan and He was working it out in her life and in the life of her baby. The bottom line of all that is Jesus Christ entered this world to prove to provide salvation for the lost. And in doing so, he proved to be exactly who he said he was. Thank God for that wonderful truth. So I ask again, do you know him? Is Jesus the chief cornerstone of your life? When you stop to think about who arrived, how he appeared, and what he accomplished, you can see that we have quite a motive for praising the Lord, don't we? As Simeon and Anna magnify the name of the Lord, I think we can learn some lessons from how 
we see them praising the Lord. A lot of what's pray, uh, passed off as praise today is nothing more than a show of the flesh. There is a biblical way to offer the sacrifice of praise, and these two old people do it. These two old saints of God. First of all, notice that their praise is vocal. They didn't keep it bottled up inside. They let other people know who Jesus was and what He meant to them. He let the overflow of His heart come out through His, through his speech, didn't He? Through His voice. He opened His mouth and He lifted up His voice in praise for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to do that. Their praise was visible. Simeon involved his entire person in the act of praise. He reached out. He took the baby. He lifted him before the Lord. He held him on high as he praised the Lord. He was not embarrassed to praise the Lord vocally and visibly. When Anna enters the picture, she blends her voice with that of Simeon and adds an additional element. When Simeon lifted up his hands and his heart and his voice to the Lord, Anna praises the Lord, but she also tells others about what the Lord is doing. She speaks the words and tells others. You might say, well, I can't sing, but you can speak. I can't sing either, but I can speak and I can tell others who Jesus is. I realize that we're living in a day when old-fashioned praising the Lord is out of, you know, vogue. People are too afraid of what others might think of them to be involved in vocal, visible praise. But friends, let me tell you, God still likes it and God still expects it from His people. I'll just go ahead and state for the record that there's nothing wrong with vocal, visible praise to the Lord God. Psalm 47 and 1 Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a, tr a voice of triumph. Psalm 98 and 4, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Psalm 135, 1, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise Him, O His servants of the Lord. Of ye that stand in the house of the Lord and in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto His name, for it is pleasant. Hebrews 13 and 15. By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. In Revelation chapter 4, you see a scene in heaven, which I believe to be a depiction of the raptured church in heaven, singing and praising God. Also, Psalm 63 and 4. Thus will I bless thee, while I live, I will lift up my hands in thy name. Psalm 134 and 2. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Psalm 51, 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Talking about the uh, verbal telling of who he is. Psalm 107 and 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Mark 5, 19 and 20. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. We ought to praise the Lord. We ought to do it with our whole person. We ought to do it with our voice. Starts in the house of God, lifting up His name in songs of praise and worship and testimony and, and however we can praise Him. But it goes beyond these walls to tell people out there, listen, Jesus has done great things in my life and I believe He'll do great things in your life if you'll just turn to Him. Praise the Lord. That's why this is so appropriate for today because tonight we're going to have fifth Sunday singing. Come back and praise the Lord. Lift up His name. He stole praises unto God for what He's done in our life, your life and mine, in the life of this church, in the year that's passed.
looking with anticipation, looking with the coming new year, not with fear and fret, but as an opportunity. Whatever the Lord lets us see of the new year, every day brings an opportunity that He has for us to serve Him and to honor Him. So keep that in mind. Will you bow with me, dear Father? We bow before you. We thank you again for your word. We thank you for this series. We thank you that you did bring the plan of ages, God, into, into time when you delivered your Son, the only begotten of the Father, into this world to live, die, and rise again for our forgiveness, salvation, for our justification. Father, let us now be ones that praise you, that unashamedly, unreservedly praise you for who you are and what you've done. I thank you for every blessing of the year past. And I thank you in advance for every opportunity of the year ahead. I ask you to help us, help me personally and the rest of us, help us to, to make the most of every opportunity, to redeem the time, to make the most of every opportunity you give us. Help us to walk after you, that you could continue to bless and, and, uh, and get you glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.